All right, guys, we're once again venturing off over here, and today we're going to talk about um, how to figure out if your compressor is bad, shorted to ground, uh, if it could possibly be a few other things. But uh, in this video, we're going to cover why you might be tripping your indoor breaker. So let's get to it and uh, go over some possibilities. All right, now safety first. Now this is gonna look a little different because it's part of our main building here, but in residential applications, you're still gonna have something similar to this guy right here. Uh, I'm gonna work on this unit here that we're not using right now in our other suite. So always make sure that you first cut the power. This is your disconnect. We're just kind of going to go under here. You can see that ours is already off, but uh, just make sure, you know, when you're flipping the switch here, that you do flip it all the way down, make sure it clicks. And we're not always going to trust that, right? So we're going to go over to our unit and we're going to first check power before we even get into touching the compressor. All right, so what we're working on here, it's an old style ream. It's going to kind of pull off the side. And most of you are going to have a panel that's going to look different than uh, this. This is kind of a ream, rude uh, thing. So a lot of these have these slide ends like this. And what I like about this design is it actually keeps the electrical panel off here on the side with the compressor separate from the fan motor, which is really great when you're trying to work on a unit. So this is just gonna come off of here like this. And as you can see, they've got their electrical up here and the compressor is down here off to the side, away from the motor. All right, so here we are. We're gonna go ahead and lift this. Now this ream unit is a two-stage, which means it's going to have a control board here, and it's not going to have a contactor because the contactor is actually gonna be all integrated here in your main control for the outdoor unit. You know, we've got our capacitor, our relay for our hard start, our hard start, and this is our uh, control board. With these, um, you're not gonna see a contactor um, to check for power. And I can show you here in a second what the uh, main contactor would look like in a normal unit. But for now, we're going to check power here and make sure that we do not have 240 so we don't electrocute ourselves to death. Cool. So how do we do that? Well, from our main disconnect, we follow that whip all the way in. Dun, 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 dun. To here and we can see we know the main power is coming in right here another super obvious way to tell for those of you that have you know boards like this um, is look at the gauge of wire see if we can get a good angle here you see at these terminals right here there's two very large gauge copper stranded wire here Okay, and that is generally how you know. I mean, it's going to be huge. You know, a lot of them are six, eight gauge wire, somewhere around there. So you know, hey, that's definitely going to be where my disconnect main, you know, power coming in through the house or through the disconnect. Just a side note um, from the friendly sun in Texas. It is so hot that my phone is actually overheating quite a bit. So that's fun. 
All right, so we're gonna take our meter, we're gonna turn it to volts AC, and we're gonna take both of our leads here. We're gonna put one on each of these terminals. Make sure it's tightened down really well. If you're just gonna you know, check it this way, we're just gonna directly connect it. Make sure you are getting one on each. If you're just not sure, you wanna be extra safe, you can reach in there with some clips or just make sure you're getting a real good connection when you're checking for power. Meter is not reading anything, which means we're good to go. All right, now if your compressor is tripping the breaker, there's some really simple steps we can take to figure out if this is the culprit. And then once you do, you don't have to go, you know, hunting around inside um, something in your indoor panel, this will knock it out right away. Because we're not sure if it's actually the compressor that's tripping the breaker, there's an easy way to fix that. Just take the compressor out of circuit. So this big old plug on here, this is a Copeland style plug. There's a few different sort of plug types. There's Copeland, uh, LG, Bristol, Dan Foss. I've seen a few. Um, some of them, you know, they look different, but the idea is the same. Somewhere in your unit, you're gonna have something that looks like this, or it's gonna be kind of a short, stumpier guy. I'll, I'll put up an image of that on here. Um, it's a pot, what we call a pot compressor. Since we wanna take this out of circuit just to see if it is the culprit, or at least one of the culprits, uh, we're just gonna remove this off of here. All right, right off the bat, just make sure that you did double check that the power is not on. Very, very important. So now we're gonna take this and we're going to remove it. Okay. And this will take the compressor out of circuit so we can see if it does in fact cause the breaker to trip right away. So obviously don't leave it that way, don't leave it on. But if we're not tripping a breaker, we know 90% of the time it's usually a shorted compressor. Now there can be a few other things depending on the length uh, but what we're doing right now in this segment is if it is tripping your breaker as soon as you turn cool on your thermostat. So now, boom, we've taken it out of circuit. It does not trip the breaker. So how are we going to make double sure that this is in fact the culprit? Well. Let's whip out our meters. All right, just make sure that your meter is turned over to continuity for this test right here, this symbol, because you want to hear the beep. You want to know that it is in fact, you know, it does have continuity. and. There should not be continuity in any of your windings on the compressor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test that against this copper pipe here. And so ours is kind of dirty. You might have to kind of scratch or scrape. Like this I can see right here is the best point to test it against. And I'm just gonna you know, scrape it, make sure I can make a good connection. And now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the plug cause the plug kind of has it labeled there, but we're not gonna test it on the plug. So see how it has S, C and R, which stands for common start run. 
so those plugs, those prongs that are stuck in there, that is what we're gonna put one side of our lead on. We put one here, you know, any one you can start, doesn't matter. And we test it against the copper line. All right, no continuity, good, okay. So we're gonna check it against the next prong. Good, no continuity, perfect, perfect. And then we're gonna test it against the last line. No continuity. Now, if you do hear the beat and you need to check all three windings, if you do hear a beep, your compressor has shorted the ground Therefore, it is bad. You know, the simple ways that could be tripping a breaker, you know, if we can just easily say, all right, uh, well, it's no longer tripping a breaker, so it's gotta be the compressor. Key fact that we need to know specifically is time frame to trip the breaker. So how long when you, you know, turn on your cooling, how long does it take to trip the breaker? It's the key piece of information we need to know. If it is tripping the breaker immediately, that is when we come out here and we test this, okay? If it's not immediately tripping the breaker, now that, that doesn't rule out the compressor, but it also complicates things. If say it trips a breaker after five minutes, 15 minutes, a couple hours, something like that, normally that has something to do with the line pressures in your unit. And what I mean by that is the levels of refrigerant in your unit. Now this unit has pressure switches that will cut the power to the unit, but it should not be tripping a breaker. Now, if it's tripping a breaker, unless you have a weak breaker, that implies that that is a massive strain on your compressor and it's gonna overamp and boom, it's gonna trip that breaker, right? So at this point, we need to know what is causing that since now we can rule out, you know, we've done the continuity test, right? You know. It, we don't just stop at removing the plug and assume it's a bad breaker. Uh, reason for that is you can remove the plug, which effectively takes the compressor out of circuit, but if you have line pressure issues, and this is specifically for the people whose breakers don't trip right away, it could be over 70% possibility here you've got a refrigerant leak. If someone came in and charged the unit recently, they could have overcharged it. The refrigerant could just be running low. There's a few different factors there. A good way to tell when your compressor is overamping, um, that's gonna require you to get something like this. Now you don't have to get an expensive one like these but something that has an amp clamp because you're going to measure the amp draw of your compressor. Obviously, if your compressor is going way above what it lists on the initial amp draw here, then you know something's going on with your line pressures and you need to have someone, uh, unless of course you're a technician, you need to have someone come out and check your refrigerant levels what you can do up until then is at least check the amp draw on the unit and it'll tell you here how many amps it should be pulling. It should say something like FLA, like full load amps, but mostly just be looking at the amp draw and make sure it's not pulling over that amp draw. With most compressors, unless you have a hard start or a soft start kit, it's gonna kick on, it's gonna pull a lot of amps up front. And then you should see that number start to go down. 
Uh, it should never overamp. It should never overamp for any amount of, you know, in a somewhat extended period. Now, it is always going to pull more on startup, especially if you do not have something like a compressor saver or, you know, a soft start kit. So just keep that in mind that if you're not tripping a breaker right away, it could be some of these factors. Another thing that so many people fight me over and they don't realize is that it is so important to keep your indoor coils cleaned as well. Now, obviously this is a unit we don't have in use because you can see it's pretty dirty here, but people either don't know or don't want to go clean their indoor coils. And here's the thing, you don't have to clean indoor coils near as often as you do outdoor coils for obvious reasons. We're out in the elements all the time. So they need to be cleaned twice a year, at the very least once a year. Your indoor coils are equally important. So you need to make sure at least once every three years to upwards of five, it's really gonna help your compressor because um, it's not having to push through all the, the dust and you know, nasty dirt, hair, all that. So keep your filters changed regularly and every few years, clean your indoor coils. You will be like amazed at the difference of cooling in your home from also keeping your indoor coils maintenance. So keep that in mind. That could be part of the reason why your compressor is having the issues that it is. Okay, just make sure whenever you're leaving to grab all your tools off the condenser because now we've done everything we can outside to check and see if it is the compressor. If you are tripping a breaker right away, that's gonna be how you test your compressor, see if that's the culprit. Also lead both you and the technician in the correct direction to figure out what else could be causing this. Before you even get your happy ass outside, start doing all this shit, save yourself a lot of time and actually check over the wires, you know, check and make sure there's not any obvious melted wires in your disconnect um, or obvious burns. Check and make sure the wires coming in to the unit are not burned, melted. Check your capacitor on the inside where we opened all of that, make sure there's no burned wires, which can also be an indication of your compressor over amping and literally getting so hot that it is melting the wire itself. So those are often some signs when you say blow a capacitor. If you notice you have melted wires on the capacitor or the contactor, okay, those are not gonna be what's causing your wires to melt. Unless your contactor, uh, and that's the exception to the rule there, unless your contactor actually is staying engaged and it's not letting go, then yes, it will get hot, it will melt wires. So keep these things in mind. Your compressor shows a lot of different signs before it's gonna die. Keeping things clean, preventative maintenance, that is the key to everything. You know, you, you do it for your car, so why wouldn't you do it for your AC? Which is something extremely important, especially here in the South when we get up to temperatures like 110. So keep your unit maintained and she's gonna treat you good. Treat her good, she'll treat you good. It's good relationship advice. All right, well, y'all take care and we'll see you in the next video. Hope this helps shed some light on why you might be tripping breakers.